And welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Joseph Wood, and I am with the fabulous Dr. Latasia Jones, flies like Dr. Ever in life. How are you doing, Doc? Today. You what are. You are. We're going we gonna to do it today. <laughs> oh, man. I am doing well. How are you? I am doing great. I am doing great. So we are here because we've created this platform that we are calling More Than an Athlete, where we're interviewing former athletes to talk about what makes them more than an athlete, the mindset that goes into uh, seeing yourself as more than an athlete and not just having your identity wrapped around sports. And if your identity is wrapped around sports, how you can change your perception of yourself and be able to see yourself beyond sports, because at some point sports will come to an end, but you will still be here. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. And even thinking beyond that, like a lot of people don't make it pro. I was looking into statistics today and our, our guest today is a former basketball player mm -hmm. and I'm looking at statistics and it's saying that from high school, only 3% of those basketball players make it to college. And then from there, only 1% make it pro. So right, right. Thank you. And, and that retrospect, what are you doing as your backup plan? And that's, that's a big question that a lot of us have to think about as we go along our journey. Yeah. 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 I, I can remember my moment going through something like that, coming out, transitioning out, out of high school, going into college, always playing football. Sports was it. Like in Tallahassee, one of the things we do is we play sports. Right. And I, I know myself, I was lost for a couple of years because my identity was wrapped around myself as an athlete. So mm -hmm. it was a it was a start transition. It was tough. It was a realization that, OK, this really is life. Like all the stuff those these adults have been telling you, like this is real. But so now it's all right, so how do we give it to people in a in a in a manner that's digestible and more realistic? Right, right. And I think even beyond this, I love this topic because we're specifically going to talk about being more than an athlete and how you can overcome, you know, that identity crisis. But right. we could take it way beyond and go to other different topics. I, uh, some of you are probably questioning, how did Dr. Jones get in this particular element of, of a topic? But I mean, one uh, is mostly for our community and all of us understand those things. Even if, even though I'm a scientist, I understand what it means to be a rapper and a, and a, a basketball player, football player in my community versus being a scientist. And even right. being a scientist itself, after 13 years, I left the lab and that felt like an identity separation issue for yeah. me so all of these things can definitely relate to each other and be translatable across the board and you versatile as well I mean, you vers that's why you're here because you're versatile let me tell you but our people are versatile we've been adapting right. for 400 plus years right so come on like that's it's, what it's we something do. that's been passed on that's what we do it's absolutely exactly exactly so we have an exciting guest for you today um, it's a young lady who I, I've known for a while here in Tallahassee when it comes to basketball, especially women's basketball. It started with her, especially in my mind, but one of the best basketball players to ever come out of Tallahassee, Florida. She went on to play college basketball at Appalachian State University. She received a master's degree in recreation and sports science from Ohio, from Ohio University. After college, she was able to find herself, uh, find her way as a basketball coach. Um, she is also the founder of the Go Beyond Sports Network. And Go Beyond Sports is an organization for athletes, former athletes, coaches, and administrators to share and connect. Go Beyond Sports also provides comfort in those coping with discovering their ultimate identity beyond athletics through multimedia. And she's also an author. She's the author of the book, Go Beyond Intimate Perspectives from Former Athletes on How to Win at Life. Also, Go Beyond Part Two, The Final Play, as well as Coaching from the Heart, The Greatest Untold Stories. So I want y'all to give a big virtual round of applause for my good friend, Miss Kezia Kanye. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was a great introduction. I appreciate you. you you're a great person. And what you do fits right into what we what we have going on here at more than an athlete and mm -hmm. we we welcome you so it's on you Absolutely. Doc. Absolutely. Doc. i we definitely appreciate you all having me on the show 
Oh, no problem. No, we enjoy, we definitely. This is a good starter. Let's 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 start with that because right. even right. when Joseph was going down your, you know, all the accolades you have, all I could hear was mentor, 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 and you so many oh, avenues oh. to do that. So thank you for all your contributions to the community and the impact that you're making. Um, oh, appreciate it. Let's start off with getting to know who are you as Kezia Conyers? Who are you? Well, Kezia, uh, she's a number of things. Resilient, um, definitely imperfect. Uh, someone that's here to just help. Um, and I've had, I realized that in my latter years, uh, in my 20s and early 30s. Uh, but really, like just a fighter, like I said, resilient. Um, I've had a lot of ups and downs and um, just as a person continuing to grow and evolve and right. uh, learn more about myself as a woman and as a mentor, as you say, because representation is important. Uh, mm -hmm. As I've learned that, as I've kind of transitioned into this space of, of coaching at the higher level, at the higher level and understanding that eyes are watching, um, not just kids, mm -hmm. you know, got 18, 19, 20, 21 year olds that look for mentors and look for people to follow right 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 so in saying that i know we were talking about it earlier but to you what does it mean to be more than an athlete because i feel like a lot of things you just said that go right into that yeah it means a lot because you don't want to put yourself in a box um, um because think about me um and not the, in the area i'm in now if you see me you understand i stick out um mm. And so people are already putting uh, stigmas on you, uh, getting a perception about you before you even speak. And that's why I try to tell my young ladies, uh, remember how you carry yourself. You know, demand respect, um, but also be respectful. And I think that's very important. And to understand that basketball is just one portion of your life. This is preparing you for the next ch next chapter or next stage and whatever you're going to pursue. And it's okay if you don't go professional. Um, that doesn't make you less of a person or less of a young lady. I like that though, because you're, right. you're coming from, we don't, we don't hear that a lot about, you know, women in sports who are given these life skills that you can use in anything, anything and everything. I, I constantly hear about us not being able to negotiate a salary for a job. Mm -hmm. And you're, mm -hmm. you, told me, you already told me enough to motivate me to say, hey, what is my pay looking like? <laughs> yeah. Right. So I appreciate that because I never thought to be able to put that with a sport, you know? So right. you're giving me that connection. That's good. That's definitely yeah. already beyond the sport. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And that's one of the great things about sport that is celebrated mm -hmm. a lot is the life lessons that you can learn from sports like teamwork, camaraderie, understanding how to trust other people. So so with that being said, Kezia, um, give us some, give us a, a, a picture or give us some background information about yourself as an athlete, um, the different levels that you were able to play at. And also when you found yourself transitioning out of sports, was your transition from sports difficult? Um, so of course I attended James S. Rickards high school in Tallahassee. Okay. <laughs> Acquired a scholarship to Appalachian state. And the unique story about that is Honestly, I wasn't going to college to play basketball, um, which is hard to believe because I re received a lot of accolades in, in high school, but yeah. I suffered two ACL injuries, uh, knee surgeries. Um, and so that really set me back. And I think I signed my scholarship two weeks before classes started. And I was in Boone, North Carolina, a cultural shock. I went 10 hours away from home. I went from Florida to where it's no winters to it's liable to snow from October to May. Right. <laughs> in right, North Carolina. Right. I'm in the DMV. I'm in the DMV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you understand. Yeah. It's, um, so that alone was tough, but um, that's my journey. And I played four years there, um, was able to do good things, meet great people that I'm still connected with now. Um, but what I can say, transitioning was tough because um, I speak I speak about this with my friends, but ego played a lot in me not preparing myself 
for the future. And what I mean by that, I was like, I'm, I'm a division one athlete. Mm -hmm. I'm graduating on time. People know me. I, I'll, I'll get a job or I'll get connected with someone and I'll be okay. But it didn't happen like that yeah. <laughs> at all. Uh, once I stopped playing, a lot of people stopped talking to me. And I didn't realize how much um, that was a connection that some people just associate with you because you are an athlete um, and you are doing things, great things in their eyes. And that adulation just draws them to you. And when you're done playing, it's like, OK, let me move on. And so I went through a lot of years of struggling, knowing who to trust. Not should I trust myself with the decisions I should make? And mm -hmm. it was definitely difficult. And also, I was a little bitter because I had knee surgeries. And so I was in pain a lot and just wondering, like, how can I be so talented at this sport? And it didn't pan out the way that I thought it would. Right. Um, so, yeah, that transition was very difficult. It took maybe about six, seven years to really get going. That's refreshing to hear, though, because a lot, yeah. and I know it sounds bad for me to say <laughs> that, but you know, for a person coming, I'm transitioning to, and as I was stating earlier, I'm a scientist. So I left the lab bench in March. Oh, after wow. 13, after 13 and a half years of working at a lab bench. So it's refreshing to hear that it's okay if it takes six to seven years yes. for your know, separation right. anxiety, all those hard feelings and so on to, you know, become less of a, an ordeal for you to deal with. So right. That's, that's reality. Healthy. Yeah, that's reality. That's healthy, but that's what we need to hear. Right. right. And you're right. successful, so I'm okay mm -hmm. with it taking me six to seven years now. <laughs> oh, yeah, and you, you already have the tools you need and <laughs> just trying to map out which direction, but it's, it's already in you. you know, you've know, you been doing something for 13 years and you've been successful at right. it. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's what we all have to understand. We have the ability to transition, like you said. We, we have many gifts. Um, and as I say, athletes are artists. Uh, black people are artists. We're very talented and creative. Right. And so um, you know that's it. definitely a gift. Right. And it's interesting you said that because once I published the book, I realized that it resonated with people outside the athletic realm. Mm. Yes. Um, definitely. Look, look. I was shocked because I just was in my inside my little bubble saying, oh, athletes. And right. I didn't realize it affected a lot of people. Look, I read the book twice in 24 hours. Wow. Because it, it it's a captivating book, so I, I recommend anybody to go get the book. We'll make sure we have the, the details in the description. But her book really gives a realistic perspective, and her whole platform, <clears throat> excuse me, giving a real realistic perspective on sports that people need, parents need especially, because like we, we're talking about parents who may have the mindset of, all right, this is our ticket out of here. And it's like, well, Maybe, maybe not, because there are only 12 slots on basketball teams, only 52 slots on football teams. We know those are the two major sports. And if everybody going for those major sports, it's only 32 teams in each league. It's not enough for everybody. All right. So. so I guess to follow up on that question, I have a three part question. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so I, I kind of I'm a little interested in like your experience and background in basketball playing just for a second what is your i guess your favorite moment your most victorious moment while being a basketball player before the coaching hmm. i would say scoring a thousand points um, in college yeah. hitting that milestone because it was something that i wasn't striving striving to do uh -huh. right. And when I achieved that, it was my senior year. And so, as I stated earlier, I had two ACL surgeries in high school. And then my sophomore year of college, I re-injured my right knee. Um, it wasn't a, a ligament tear, but it was meniscus. Uh -huh. And I was literally, I'm literally playing bone on bone. And what, so you have a top portion of your knee and the bottom portion and it's cartilage in between. And so bones is just rubbing together. Mm -hmm. And I was advised to not play anymore, but me being who I am, I was like, I'm going to finish my career at least. And right. so to tired. still uh -huh. to still um, be all conference and score a thousand points my senior year, that was definitely rewarding right. to me. Yeah. Thank That's you amazing. for sharing that because a lot of people, I, I did see that 
in researching too. A lot of people mm-hmm. definitely we uh, mostly get ACL issues and so on. That's like one of the top yes um, issues with sports playing, especially in basketball and track. So yeah, yeah. So I, I saw that and I was like, well, how do we defeat this? How do we still encourage people to say, okay, I'm still going to push through and you know you, be in sports or be in whatever else I'm going to do? And you just gave that answer. Keep Keep motivated, keep encouraged, yep. and get past that challenge. It's temporary. So yep. I appreciate that. That's definitely a victorious moment. So I'm, I'm going to bring on the other two parts now. You ready? Go ahead. Do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> so your transition from a basketball player to a coach, how did that go? What tools did you utilize for that and so on? And then your third part to that three-part question with, would be, what's your most victorious moment as a coach? Um, well, the transition to coaching was pretty easy, uh, just something I naturally get gravitated towards basketball. And it's when I was back home in Tallahassee, just still trying to figure it out. But of course, I knew um, I was well connected in the area. And so I just started coaching high school. And from there, I realized that my experience was helping uh, the insight I had towards the game as far as on the court, but also off the court. Um, just knowing what to expect. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that was the what I think was great about playing sports is that you could give your advice and insight um, to younger athletes because you've already been down the road. They're trying to travel. Right. And so it was an easy transition as far as that perspective. Now, uh, acquiring different positions, it took time. Um, I had to sacrifice a lot, take a lot of part-time coaching jobs um, to get to where I am now mm-hmm. um, as a head coach. But uh, it's definitely a sacrifice, but it's it's worth it, though, because it's rewarding when you see them at a junior college after two years, how they've matured, um, how they understand that uh, it's a process. Um, they understand work ethic, and then they acquired that four-year scholarship that they never thought they would do. Um, right during their freshman year. And so that's what rewarding about it. I had the opportunity to coach hundreds of young women from Africa to Tampa, Florida. Um, and so to see the different cultures and how they get get to a certain point in life and they wanna be successful mm-hmm. and you don't have to just follow up with them so much about staying on track academically and athletically, I think that's what rewarding when they actually get it. They have that light bulb moment. Right. Nice. Oh, that's amazing. But also, that's a, a tribute to you as well, because a lot of people underestimate the the role that coaches play. Mm-hmm. And like I just went through a leadership training, um, just got out of it like three mm-hmm. weeks ago. And one of the things that that the the instructor talked about is stretching yourself beyond your limits and learning to learning to understand that you can stretch beyond your limits but coaching helps you stretch beyond your limits by challenging you and so you being in that position you definitely help those young ladies look inside themselves and find the greatest version of themselves right not just challenging them challenging myself as well (laughs) right it definitely stretches you right so so with that being said as a person who is still within the world of athletics, um, you told us uh, about your your rise as a coach, your journey as a coach. Also, it took about six or seven years for you to have a full transition um, out of sports and, and find yourself on the path that you wanted to be on. So was it difficult to be able to see yourself as more than an athlete during your transition, like what helped you mm-hmm. be able to recognize that, okay, I know I'm an athlete and I know I'm, I'm, I'm great at what I do as an athlete, but I'm a whole human being and I can do more than this. Like, how did that realization come about? Uh, definitely through coaching. Uh, when you see the young adults only focusing on uh, playing basketball, not understanding you need to stay eligible, you need to make A's and B's, pass your classes, and that's when I realized that I, I need to come at a different angle uh, at my players and, and not just allow them to think it's all about X's and O's and improving on the court. Because, like I said, from my journey, I understood that 
it's going to stop one day. And so as a coach, it really helped me get like an inside look on how important it is to not just harp on becoming a better basketball player, but becoming a better person, uh, challenging yourself, right. um, improving academically, just understanding the, the whole package, because that's what's going to carry you through adulthood and business and forging relationships and networking. So I would definitely say coaching helped me realize that. Oh, that's amazing. So, and, and with that, so you're saying coaching. So um, was it earlier in your coaching career or as you start progressing as a coach, um, did that really help you see it? Or was it like some an immediate realization? Like, okay, I'm in this position. I'm more than this. So how did that happen? Uh, it wasn't immediate. Uh, it took about a few years. Uh, like I said, it was pr definitely a progression. Um, and just gaining different experiences with different players. Um, so, yeah, it took some time for sure. Because, yeah, my first few years, I knew my insight helped, but I didn't look at it as, oh, okay, I need to prepare these young women for life after sports as well, not mm. just basketball. Right, right. Now, that's good. That's good. That's so I guess this is a good time to talk about your book since we're right. already on the topic. <laughs> Uh, but just to make sure everybody else knows, you have this amazing book called Go Beyond the Intimate, mm -hmm. which I love the title, especially the part where it says Inter the intimate perspective from former athletes on how to win at life. Uh, can you tell us more about your book and what inspired it? Um, my experience definitely inspired it. And so I, it was just one day I was thinking, of, like I said, how can I help? How can I push the needle? What else can I add uh, to myself as valuable and to other players? And so I just started writing and it really didn't take me that long to get out my thoughts because <laughs> I didn't realize I had so much uh, bodied up in, inside. And so yeah. then I reached out to a few former athletes that I personally uh, know and they were feeling the same way. And what's crazy is that we were all friends, but we never talked about this subject. It was like, we can't talk about this because everybody gets emotional. Yeah. But <laughs> it was like to under to really understand that they felt this way as well and wanted to share. I thought that was neat and that athletes need to hear this uh, because it's real and you have to prepare for the future. Right. So my our experiences inspired me to write the book. Right. Right. Nice. And I guess that's the best thing to inspire you to do anything is your experience. And mm -hmm. you already located a community of other individuals who were going through the same experiences and feeling the same way. So now you found, like, what, what do they call it, like, a need? So you're supplying mm -hmm. to a need. Um, yeah. You have the supply and demand going on with this book. <laughs> so that's the amazing part is to hear you're helping people through recognizing there was something that you went through and sharing your story. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you, I didn't realize that so many other athletes go through it. I just thought yeah. it was me, which I don't know why, but it was just in my head. I can't share this. This is how I'm feeling. And because uh, it was a little embarrassing to think, OK, you did everything right. You were a great player. You graduated. And then now it's OK. I'm struggling to yeah. uh, just kind of find out what life is about. And so what you realize that a lot of athletes go through this. Right. Right. Yeah right you are you are an a whole author like a whole full-on author mm -hmm. like i just want to just with that how does it feel to like really come to the realization like i'm an author i wrote a book i put a book in, and i have other books in this series like how does that feel it's a great feeling because i never would have well when i wrote i was like okay if only a few people read it um hear about it that's fine i, I got it out but to know that it's helped so many people and get great feedback about it. Right. Um, like I said, hear from people from different realms, not just the sports world, to know that they resonated with it. It, it feels good actually, and it motivates me to write more. And so I definitely want to walk the walk, not just talk it, you know, I want to go beyond, not just an athlete, but a coach as well, right. um, because I don't want to get, tied in this circle of just the coaching world either. Um, I want to expand out and um, definitely start speaking more. 
uh, at different events, like I said, writing more books and just really embodying the whole go beyond persona. Absolutely. And what I like about that is you're going, you're saying going beyond it. And I don't even think you realize how you're going beyond where you started. Like even just writing the book in itself, like I keep yeah. bringing this up, but I've never heard a lot of athletes talking about writing a book about their experience and how they dealt with that separation right. anxiety from mm -hmm. the core itself and how they evolved to be more than the actual athlete itself. So, and I, I read on your website about some of the feedback that you did receive and it, it's mentoring to others. Like the fact that somebody picked up your book, read it and felt inspired to go beyond where they thought was their breaking point. That's, that's amazing. And that was in words right. that you put on paper. So, and right. you're talking about being a speaker and so on. So you're finding these multiple ways to do this. And I, I just look, anything, any way we can help, let us know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. This is helping right now. Just getting, <laughs> continue to get the word out. Continue to inspire as many people as we can. Yeah. Absolutely. You, you need to go to the TED Talk website and mm. register because you would be an awesome TED Talk, and I know they would be glad to have you on one of the platforms. Oh wow! Okay, I will check that out. Um, do that, do that. I'm telling you. So you have you 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 have your lane. You you are where you are. You created Go Beyond. You have your books. You're you still a basketball coach. Um, tell us about a success story or some experiences that you've had that that was the the seal of approval that let you know, okay, I cho I made the right choices. I'm in the right lane. I'm in the right place. This is my calling. Like, what has happened uh, that was that stamp of approval for you that kind of made you smile and pat yourself on the back? when you get that first call from a former player who's just want to say thank you coach or I, I get it i understand it now um and sometimes it, it takes them removing themselves from playing mm. to understand what what coaches are trying to instill in them and i had a friend uh, another coaching friend of mine once say you know you plant the seed now but it, it's not going to bloom until a few years later and a lot of times we want it right now. I want to drill it in the head right now, right now. This is what you need to understand. But when they get it, that's what's rewarding. And that's when you know, okay, this is what what I'm meant to do. Right. And I feel like a lot of times that you're kind of like going against the actual sport itself. Because when you play the game, you're either going to win or you're going to lose. But it's going to happen right now, right? Right. Now, you're telling individuals, hey, we're going to have to wait. But you need to work towards something bigger than that. Yeah. Be patient. So if, if right. you're going against the previous thought, which is probably going to be a struggle in itself, but um, it's, it's big. It's big to even just understand that concept. And going with that, what would be your big token advice or the words of wisdom that you would provide to those individuals who are at the beginning of their athletic career or even in their prime? I think the mm -hmm. prime is probably the 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 hard, more hard head people, yeah, yeah, right? Right, while, right. While they're still getting all the scores and get, they have high numbers, of high stats and stuff. What would you tell them in their prime based on the wisdom that you have acquired over the years? Uh, black out all the noise, you know, get to know yourself um, mm. right. and being alone. Because as I said, when you're great and you're playing well and as you stated, you're in your prime, you're going to have a lot of different people in your ear uh people in your circle they're going to constantly be saying what you should do what you shouldn't do uh what about this so i would say find out who you are uh, have some alone time what else are you interested in what else you know you you want to gravitate towards just not focus on your sport right, right. right. do you think it's easy to to become so engulfed by this sport where you forget that like I said, I don't have too much of a sport background, so I'm getting all this from you both. But do you think it's easy to get so sucked in where you forget, hey, with Asia, you have other things that you're good at. Do you think it's easy for that to happen to you? Have you ever experienced that yourself? Uh, yeah, it's, it's very easy. Very easy because people are like your cheerleader. So mm -hmm. it's easy to just get caught up in that whirlwind and not focus on what else you can add value to what other part of your life you can improve in. 
Right. Um, so it happens all the time, definitely. Right. You know, that's a great question because it made me think about Myron Rowe, the neurosurgeon now, mm -hmm. coming out of Florida State. He had a vision of, okay, I want to play football, but I also, ultimately, I want to be a, a neurosurgeon. So he went into the game seeing himself as more than an athlete. And the NFL punished him for that. Mm -hmm. And so it is, it's very easy to be lost in the sauce in the world of sports and, and to only see yourself as a football player. Cause I can remember, or any athlete, I can remember hearing stories of athletes who, when it was over for them, they fell into depressions. Mm. Right. And it's you like, you definitely do. You know, when you hear that, you're like, dang, it's, it's, it's real because those stories are not told often. So what you're telling us now, Keezy, that's why we appreciate um, the the wisdom that you're giving us because the the average person is not going to hear this from athletes. Right, right. I try to be as candid as possible, even if you play professional. I remember when last year was it last year, maybe two years ago, when Dwayne Wade was approaching his retirement, how he stated he was struggling with it, and we talk about right. a millionaire, an NBA champion, right. who has all the resources in the world, and he's struggling with the end of his career and trying to really realize, okay, what else can I do? What else do I even want to pursue? Right. And, and so it doesn't matter what level uh, you stop playing at because uh, it's, it's really ingrained in you. Cause it's something, like I said, that you've been, you've been dating or in a marriage with for 10, 12, 15, right. 18, 20 years. And now all of a sudden it's a breakup. So it hurts. Yeah. It's yeah, just a yeah. whole divorce. Yeah, it's the kids and the dog involved. Oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that's what it sounds like. For it, me. You're exactly right. No, nah, that's that's real. It, it is. It's because the emotional attachments, because mm -hmm. you, you miss the relationships as well. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. So, which was a, that was a new thing for me to hear you say or hear anybody say was the fact that the, the relationships with the individuals you had while playing the sport mm -hmm. were non existent after you left the sport. So, yeah. it, I've never heard of that. That's, I'm thinking now, I'm like, well, you know, when LeBron left the team, you know, <laughs> that, that, that's where I'm thinking as, as, you know, an example, but um, that's, that's, that's powerful. You don't want to lose those relationships with those people that you bonded with. It's kind of like military boot camp and stuff. And these people say yeah. they're bonded for life and they mean it. They're bonded for life. So yes. to see that bond being, you know, longer, no longer existing, that, that's got to wear down on an individual. Right. right. It does. And if you look at it, if you kind of look at their perspective, this is something else I told a friend of mine that was a former athlete. People only know you as what you were or who, who they know. So for me, example, everyone mm -hmm. knew me as a basketball player. Mm -hmm. So when I stop, it's hard to think of me, if, me think of me as anything else. Right. And so they don't know. And for a, a lot of times I harped on that of, of why you only view me as a, a athlete, but that's all they know you to be. So when you're not that, it's like, okay, yeah. well, who are you? Right. Are you? <laughs> I get that. I yeah. get that. I get now, that. I guess one of the shocking things for me is, even though I'm I'm familiar a bit with it, but just hearing it, just when you hear it again, that okay, I know you. I see you a whole person, but mm -hmm. I I'm only looking at you in the lens of all right, you you can you can run, jump, and shoot, and it's it's crazy because that's how that's really how people view our athletes. That's why we get mm -hmm. the shut up and dribble situations with a lot of people mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. athletes. It's like it's like think about growing up watching sitcoms and the athlete is always a person who's not smart. And so right, it's, that just, is true. It, it's just so. Let me let me ask this with saying that. How do you, as a former athlete and a coach, help to break the stereotypes of athletes? Like, okay, you're not smart, and this is the only thing you can do. Like, what what should be doing, or what are some of the things that you've done to help break out of those stereotypes? Um, as far as my players, um, you know, honestly, 
they are smart though. They just right. don't want to apply themselves. Um, or they understand I could kind of bend this corner and take this shortcut and and I know someone would be there to help me and pick pick it up for me, whatever I don't get. And so athletes gotta learn how not to fall into that trap. Um, mm. and I always try to hold my players accountable. Uh, as far as with us, I'm staying on top of them. We're doing study hall three to four days a week and just reminding them of who they are as as individuals and how talented they are. And I always re reassure them of, you know, your talents are going to go far past what you do on the court. And that was something I, I hit on this fall. You know, we started Mindful Mondays in November and each Monday we met. We actually read my book and just started discussing, um, getting thoughts out. And I learned more about them just in that time, that hour than I did any time of the week. Uh, and so really just letting them know, hey, you have everything you need, but you have to apply yourself and don't get caught up in the stereotype that the world sees you as because you're right. more than that, of course. Right. That's, right. that's big in itself because you're essentially saying you already have the tools. You just didn't mm -hmm. tap into the toolbox yet. So right, that's, exactly. that's a nice way of putting it. That's a nice way of teaching in the angle that you're coming from. because it, it allows people to know that you already have what you what it takes. And why is it taking you so long to get there? It's all on you at this point. So I, I appreciate that method in teaching. Right. Right. And I see that it, it's working, just letting them know. Uh, giving those encouraging words and re that reassurance um, a lot of times goes a long way. Right, right. So when you are one on one with your athletes, because like you say, you have athletes from across the world. Mm -hmm. So on a regular basis, how do you really how do you how are you preparing your athletes for the real world? Because I know. Uh, uh, athletes, they could be structured around the the sport that they play. Mm -hmm. So, because you're at a junior college, so how do you how are you taking some of that structure and really helping those uh, athletes learn life skills and different skills that will help them beyond the um, game of basketball? Oh, so what I did in my previous school. We would watch motivational clips. Uh, I would tell them to find things that motivated them and or br let's come in. Let's talk about different topics that you would like to pursue if you were not playing um, basketball. And we would discuss that just to kind of get them um, comfortable and out of that space of, OK, I have to focus on basketball. Uh, a lot of times the players they think that's what coach always want, and it's not that. And so you have to find different angles um, to approach them with, to just get them started thinking critically. And that really helps uh, off the court involvement, right. interaction, that really helps. Okay. And then just being honest, like I said, I tell them my story all the time and I don't sugarcoat it at all. And that's that's what we need. I. I I think people appreciate it more when you don't sugarcoat your story, right? right. When you give them all the, the good, the bad, and the ugly, mm -hmm. um, the sweat, the tears, and the blood, but also the victorious moments. Um, a lot of times we hear, when we hear about athletes, we only hear the good, right? Right. And it's like, it's, they never struggled, and they got all this. <laughs> <great things>. Yeah. <laughs> but now you're going against the grain, and you're saying, no, there's those moments where, you know, I had this surgery, I had this surgery, but I had to push through, and you know, a thousand points, you know, mm -hmm. that's what makes a full story on an individual who is in an, an athlete, essentially. Um, mm -hmm. I also, I, I like how you said you have to get them to think outside the box. I, I realize a lot of times with teaching the youth about STEM, a lot of times I'll ask them, you know, what is your favorite thing to do? And they'll say, a lot of them will say sports. Mm -hmm. And then I'll be like, well, how do you see STEM in the sport? And they cannot figure it out. But there's so many different, even kicking the ball at a certain angle, that's not it it is. So, it's amazing. To, I think I ultimately think people that play sports well are actually the best seminars or the best people that could be in science, technology, engineering, and math. And that's wow. because you're already thinking in that mindset. If you're growing, so. and you got to count. You're problem solving. What angle yeah, do I want to solve? 
you know, how do I want to cross up this person that's trying to be on defense right now? So all those things take into play. Like I, I definitely, I get that thinking outside the box mentality. Yeah, that's definitely true. That's a good point. Great yeah. point. Yeah, no, nah, that's real. Um, And I like how you put that, though, because now I never really thought about it like that. But there's a lot of math, mathematics, there's a lot of geometry, all these different things that does go into sports. Um, just the art of shooting a basketball. Mm -hmm. But think about the, the science that goes into if you really calculate it like a, a layup versus a, a regular jumper or a three-point shot, like that's whole stem right there. That's right. outside the box. That's beyond sports right there. Right. right. That is, you know, you, you all are teaching me something. I never really <laughs> put it in that perspective. Well, I, I do have a little secret. I did play basketball when I was younger. Okay. okay. I, I at least have that much. But football, I don't understand a thing about it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so now, I yeah, I, I definitely agree. They're probably the the smartest individuals on these sports mm -hmm. and just don't even know it the whole time you're running past a, a genius, you know? Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. right. They just got to cultivate it more because my, my thing is what I'm always harping on is that athlete has a brain mm -hmm. and, and that athlete is going to have to use their brain to improve their life a lot longer than they will have to use their body. So right. how can we, develop their minds like what are their interests what do they like let's not take them away from it let's add on to it because sports is a means to an end and that's why i brought up my role for using football as a means to an end it's not an end mm -hmm. so, absolutely yeah. and, it, and saying that i think this series would definitely help with that as well as tv if you can give us all your information and how people can Look into your resources, get your book, what's your website, any other things that we need to be on the lookout for as far as upcoming in 2021. Um, let us know how we can be more inspired by you and your stories. And your oh, well, definitely uh, everyone go visit GoBeyondSportsNetwork.com. Um, look into add more content, connect with more people, um, not just in the sports realm. Uh, just anyone who wants to help give an insight to young adults on how to win at life and maneuver through all the the ups and downs and those days where you know they not feeling like, like they want to move forward. Uh, we definitely need that. And I have part two coming out, go beyond Yay. to the next play in 2021. I'm also co-authoring a book with a few other coaches and continuing to try to just inspire and motivate young women and men. Yeah. Congratulations and all your stuff. I love when people, I love when I see my people talk about authoring books. So <laughs> Thank you. Once upon a time, we couldn't even get the right to read and write. Right. Right. Now you're actually choosing to do so, and you're using the power behind the pen in order exactly. to inspire more of us. So yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. We appreciate yeah. you coming here today. I'll let you close it off. Kezia, like I appreciate you. Um, I'm glad that you allowed me to be a part of your journey. Um, I, I remember when you gave me a call about your book and you giving me your ideas of what you want to do with the book. Mm -hmm. I was excited, you know, because um, I was at, I've been able to watch you from when we got to high school to now all the hard work that you put in, all the dedication, uh, how you were dedicated to your craft mm -hmm. and being able to see you transition and dedicate yourself to yourself and others as a as a servant to the people through coaching through basketball. So we definitely want to make sure that I I continue to honor you. You know, any if there's anything I can do for you, you already know. Give me a call. I definitely help you. And we appreciate everything that you do. We appreciate uh go beyond uh, you as an author, you as a coach, you as a speaker. And we just want to be able to continue to help you moving forward. So I appreciate you and we definitely have to link up in the future and do more projects, but you continue to rise, sure. you continue to find, and you continue to go beyond. Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate both of you so much. No problem. No problem. Great conversation. Yes, yes, yes. And we'll, we will see you guys the next time. Peace yes. out.